Hello, I'm Dr. Paul, and I wanted to show you today an incredible exercise that I found through this book called Assessing the Healing Power of the Vagus Nerve. And how I got involved with this book is I downloaded a book from um, Audible, and my history with the vagus nerve is I've been taught that that is a pretty significant nerve for just healing in general. It controls a lot of different functions in the body. And when I listened to the book, it made me realize that this author was doing the same type of testing that I was doing, which I, I do not know personally one chiropractor that does this type of uh, testing, and it's a skin resistance test. And so when he explained that he was doing that, that really intrigued, uh, piqued my interest. I got the actual uh, book as well, besides the Audubon, and I started reading all the exercises that he showed. But the basics to the exercises is based on the foundation of the vagus nerve and how it functions in the body. So the vagus nerve is a nerve that starts here in the cranial area, comes out of the brain stem and goes down the body. And there's uh, two parts traditionally, historically, medically understanding the vagus nerve. It's basically the, I like it to look at it as a teeter-totter of rest and relaxation. So this is rest and relaxation as one part of the nervous system or the vagus nerve. The other part would be the stress part. So they like to teeter-totter. You can't be stressed and relaxed at the same time. If you're relaxed, you're not stressed. But this book goes into a third part. And so the sympathetic part, there's basically three stages of the vagus nerve. Uh, you have the fight or flight response, which is sensing danger with your eyes, ears, nose, and whatever you use to listen to potential danger. And then you have what we call the freeze mode when you're actually you're locked because you are so scared, you, don't, you can't do anything because of that vagus nerve shutting down your nervous system. But there's a third part that's called a safety part, and that's called polyvagal nerve theory. And that third part, it's part of the parasympathetic nervous system, which, which is resting and relaxation, but it's a social engagement part. And the thing that's interesting about that is when you're safe with people, you're engaging that relaxation part of the parasympathetic nervous system and how even your thought life can affect how that vagus nerve interacts with your body. So as a chiropractor, it's really important to understand, or I'm trying to educate my patients, how to create safety in all your environments so that you don't go out of alignment. And how does that link together? Well, for example, there's a story in the book, and this is I've experienced this in my practice since I've just started doing this, that this first vertebrae is right next to that brain stem and when it goes out of alignment, that can happen from a thought. For example, when you are thinking a bad thought, you can actually misalign that vertebrae. And I have that story is in the book that explains that when he thought of this a negative thought while he was being tested in, in the book, uh, C1 vertebrae misaligned itself. It rotated out of a position. And when he got treatment, it brought it back into alignment. But you can also do that with these exercises, which is the beautiful thing. Also a healthy thought life too, so that you prevent it in the first place. So for example, uh, the book doesn't go too much into this, but healthy thoughts, obviously uh, good, right? I'm a Christian. And so one of the things that I like to do is read the scriptures on what it looks like to, to think uh, good thoughts. And one of them is Psalm 104. It says, enter his courts with thanksgiving, and pray. So one of the things I thoroughly enjoy doing is engaging with, with the Lord, starting with entering his presence with thanksgiving and with praise. And I play my guitar, sing worship songs, and I just sense such a intimacy when that happens. It brings tears sometimes to my eyes. And I encourage, if you, even if you're not a Christian, to meditate on good thought. I encourage you to engage with the spiritual realm, in particular with the Lord himself, to allow him to connect with you because ultimately he is my source of peace, he's my source of hope, he's my source of happiness. And when I engage with him in praise and thanksgiving, that engages, it's like a child and a father, a child and a mother, you know, who likes complaining? And one of the pet peeves in my household with four kids is complaining. Because you don't want to engage with that, that child when they complain to you. But when they come to you and say, Daddy, and they kiss you, and they hug you, and they smile at you, and they're listening to you and not complaining and obeying you, all those are engaging a positive social interaction. That's exactly the way God designed us. Positive social interaction. The thing that was intriguing about the book is that it aligns the spine when you think a good thought. How does it do that? Well, it's through, through that vagal nerve. 
So let's go through a little bit about the history. Just to backtrack a little bit, well, I'll go over the exercise in a second, but the understanding of the vagus nerve is that it's one of the cranial nerves. That cranial nerve is next to other cranial nerves in the brainstem. And that cranial nerve goes to the head. There's, I think, 11 cranial nerves, and I may be wrong about that, so I'll have to review that. But it goes to the head, and then it goes down to the torso, okay? So the three parts of those engaging uh, stressful responses in the environment starts with relaxation and safety, and you're safe next to this person, and so you feel comfortable in that environment. And that engages a good part, or the rest and relaxation part of that parasympathetic nervous system. But then as you, as you sense danger, you will start to do the fight or flight mode. And then if you sense even more danger, like you're going to be killed, you know, whatever it is, it may not even be that. It could be a thought that you had from experience that you had in the past that causes you to freeze. And that's even a more higher state of sympathetic, the opposite of parasympathetic, what we call a freeze mode where you just cannot do anything because you're so not a panic mode, but it's like your body just locks up. And so what I'm trying to engage with the exercises is that parasympathetic part so let's show you the first set of exercises to do that that's called the basic exercise so the way you do the basic exercise is you use your eyes because that's part of your cranial nerve activity when you activate that cranial nerve activity it helps engage the relaxation state what you're gonna do is you're gonna stand like this and you're gonna clasp your hands together put it behind your back like this and that covers right above the brainstem where all the cranial nerves are and then you're going to turn just your eyes not your head to one direction either one is fine you're going to hold that position the acronym to remember is sys sis when you feel desire to swallow yawn or sigh you go ahead and take a breath in and out and i'm just going to go ahead and do it early it usually takes about 30 to 60 seconds to do this and then i sense it so i'm going to take a breath regular breath in and out and then I'm going to take another breath in and hold. And from that position, take a further breath in and let it out slowly. And you look to the right and do exactly the same thing and repeat that process. Remember the acronym SYS for swallow, yawn, or sigh. So that's the first exercise you do. It takes about 30 seconds when you do it on the right side. Look to the right side and do it. Your body can even feel better. And I forgot to mention that you should test your neck. One way it's a good is to see how the, the test is doing. Is it helping you? Well, so you can rotate one side or the other or bend this way or this way. And if one side is tired than the other, you'll notice that after you do the exercise for many people, exercise alone can make a difference on the tightness of the neck because it realigns the spine, gets you into a parasympathetic rest mode, and it stops pulling on the neck muscles which are controlled by the cranial nerves as well. Once you get into stress mode, that cranial nerve, I think I believe it's number 11, the spinal accessory nerve goes to the trapezius and to these muscles in front. And so if you activate the stress mode in your body, it pulls on that, those muscles and causes you to go out of alignment. Interesting, huh? Next video, I'm gonna show you some more exercises. And beautiful thing is you usually notice a immediate result. One experience that I had with my family, I had my kids do this with me last night and after we did the series of exercises, they go, Daddy, I feel so tired now I want to go to bed, you know, and kids do not want to go to bed at night, right? And when they felt that tiredness, I go, I know this is working because it's activating that stress less or the relaxation part of the nervous system. I'll see you to show you with additional exercises on the next video.